Hi, I'm Dr Mary Carr, Chief Veterinary Officer of South Australia, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the Red Meat and Wool Growth Program production, brought to you by the Department of Primary Industries and Regions, Livestock SA, Animal Health Australia, and the University of Adelaide. Today we are exploring the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program with a focus on rib fractures. Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance tracks the health conditions of sheep found at the abattoir. These findings are provided to producers to assist with planning around prevention and management of prevalent animal health conditions. Rib fracture is not a very common condition in South Australian abattoirs. It is very property and season specific. Over the last three years, only 1 in 15 properties had animal with broken ribs and only 1 in 40 consignment had reported cases of broken ribs. At the animal level, you would only find on average 1 in every 200 slaughtered animal with broken ribs. Although this is a rare condition in South Australia, since the inception of the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program in 2007, we saw a steady increase in this frequency of findings in the state. Except in the last three years where we observe a slight decline. Overall, rib fractures are much more common in lamb than in muttons. From a regional point of view, lambs with broken ribs would more likely come from the southeast, when muttons with rib fractures will come from the northern pastoral region. Although there is no apparent seasonality in muttons with rib fractures, we see a very strong seasonality in lambs where most rib fractures are being detected in spring. So rib fractures encompasses recently fractured ribs or broken ribs and healing ribs and so we've got callus formation and so it takes about two months for a rib to heal and uh, and so the evidence will be present in any animal that's slaughtered basically from a fracture that's just occurred during trucking uh, right through to an animal that might have fractured their ribs a, a couple months ago. Uh, and it can be you know, one or several ribs affected. Uh, what we tend to find is it's usually only one or two ribs uh, in any one carcass. So rib fractures can be caused by physical force and so if an animal's had a, a nasty accident um, being trodden on or, uh, or and bashed around going through uh, sheep yards, but more commonly we recognise it's associated with a nutritional deficiency uh, and that may be either simply vitamin D uh, and so during winter uh, we recognise that southern Australia is predisposed to vitamin D deficiency which uh, impacts on the calcium availability in the body. So a lack of vitamin D, a lack of sunlight results in uh, poor calcium uptake and so you end up with an osteoporosis or weak bones. But we can also have um, calcium uh, and or copper deficiency and there's a number of other uh, macro and trace elements which may also play a role in that. From the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program we recognise that lambs uh, with rib fractures are, come from lines all over the state but primarily it's the higher rainfall areas, the Flurio Peninsula, Kangaroo Island, uh, Mid and Lower South East for example are the, are the high, hot spots for rib fractures. I might add that it is primarily a problem of lambs because by the time you get to hoggett or adult stage usually uh, the animal's uh, ribs are far more robust and so less inclined to be broken. So it's often uh, deficiencies associated with either the pregnant ewe or the, um, the newborn lamb uh, that are going to have weak bones that are prone to being broken. Rib fractures present in anywhere in the thorax and they can be in this early stage it can be mild but in the later stages it will be more acute and will cause pleurisy. For the producer the impact is that he's going to get less weight over the scales, he's going to get a downgraded carcass because the processor will be able to recover less primal cuts. The inspectors are trained to look for fractures or adhesions or broken ribs. If they find it, it goes onto the retain rail and removed by trimming. So the rib fractures we, we had in our lambs, we actually hadn't noticed anything on farm um, and we weren't aware of the fact that we had this issue until we saw in the plant the rib fractures in our lambs and we're getting that feedback from the, the processor. On farm there was no way of us really identifying that we were suffering any loss as a result of the rib fractures. Seeing the number of lambs going through the chain that were impacted by rib fractures and seeing those uh, ribs um, trimmed out of the carcass 
um, you can imagine that every one of them adds up to you know 400 grams or 500 grams and if you add that up along the chain pretty quickly you're starting to lose kilos and kilos of meat out of the kill um, so to me uh, yeah, there's a loss in kilos of lamb, but it was also the loss in production of that lamb running around the paddock with a bunch of broken ribs. So uh, for me, it was important to identify what was doing it and try and rectify it. Once we identified that we had the rib fracture problem, we talked to a few uh, stock agents and local people who you know, we thought might have had some ideas about uh, what, what was causing these rib fractures. And generally the advice was nutrition, because at the moment there's obviously uh, been work done on the nutrition effect and, and rib fractures. Um, but also, uh, typically with shearing and crutching, there was a lot of talk around mechanical um, and how, how mechanically they could have been broken. So the issue we had here was the, the ribs were being broken in our way box on the rear gate. Um, so as a lamb entered, the first lamb dropped the floor which shut the rear gate and if a second lamb happened to be following close behind it would pin them on the rib cage um, and having thought about it after seeing that we had these rib fractures um, we decided that that was a fairly likely cause of the problem um, and just with a few adjustments um, to, to the way we operate and getting a new handler um, that operate in a totally different manner we've now no longer see the case of rib fractures in our kills. I've followed many lines of lambs through the plant in the last sort of three, four years, uh, and I don't see any numbers of rib fractures now compared to what I'd saw when we first identified the problem. Um, so I would be very confident saying that our rib fracture issue has been sorted. Luckily, it wasn't the nutritional one that is going around. It was an easy fix just purely out of the way we manage our stock and, and the equipment we use. We also um, embarked on a process of upgrading our yards. We had a fairly old fashioned set of yards that were developed over time by my grandpa and my dad. And they were fairly rickety, uh, didn't have good flow. There was lots of corners, um, points where the, the animals would rub around um, and pre pressure points. And uh, in building these yards, we've tried to make it so the stock flow much more freely through the yards and there's less opportunity for them to be pinched or, or pushed into a corner or caught on something. It's very important to have infrastructure that is suited to good animal movement. When we talk um, rib fractures, you might have one or two percent associated with perhaps an unfortunate uh, physical injury but most of the time it's going to be more associated with um, mineral deficiencies, vitamin D deficiencies. The important strategy is for producers to actually be aware of what deficiencies are in their flock um, uh, and that may require soil testing, plant tissue analysis. All ewes should be getting calcium supplements in the lead up to lambing uh, because there are a number of different um, circumstances whether they're on short dry feed, long lush feed, on a prolonged grain diet, they're always going to be calcium deficient diets and so I recommend that um, calcium supplements should be provided to all ewes in the last six to eight weeks of lambing to encourage uh, good skeletal development in the, in the unborn foetuses. Uh, vitamin A, D and E for example, um, injections in the last six weeks before lambing can also um, not only uh, reduce the risk of rib fractures but it also improves calcium metabolism. Uh, and so reduces the risk of dystocia or difficult birth as well. So, uh, and then the vitamin E is also an immunostimulant, so it prevents um, the likelihood of infection. So you'll get seasonal variations for sure, and it's always the more the wetter years or the higher rainfall years where we see a lot more rib fractures occurring. Uh, but some properties, and they may know through um, feedback from the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program, uh, occur every year. And so, um, yeah, they need to seriously think about preventative strategies to um, minimise the risk. And of course, they'll get the benefit through uh, improved welfare and growth rates in their lambs. As a result of the enhanced abattoir surveillance and the feedback we were seeing from the plant, uh, we identified that we had the rib fracture problem, um, looked into it, found a potential problem, uh, made some changes to our infrastructure to avoid the, that problem in the future and now we're seeing much less prevalence of rib fractures and uh, going forward I uh, can't see why they should return here on this farm.
Between 2007 and 2021, the Department of Primary Industries and Regions managed the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program at Lobethal and Murray Bridge, with funding from the State and National Sheep Industry Funds and National Industry Funding from Meat and Livestock Australia. It was the EAS program that provided producers with the feedback discussed in this video. Although EAS monitoring has ceased, there are plans in place to transition to entering South Australian data into the national system. This national data can inform the development and funding of appropriate industry and government initiatives on the ground to better support South Australian producers to reduce losses caused by unnecessary carcass trimming and to take advantage of premium markets. To assist producers, Animal Health Australia has partnered with PERSA to create the Sheep Health Conditions Carcass Impacts Tool a 3D digital tool designed to show the industry what six common conditions look like on a carcass and give them an idea of how much trim may occur at the processor. Livestock SA encourages all producers to talk to their processors about what carcass and disease and condition data they can access from their consignments. Thanks for watching. We hope you have learned more about rib fractures and the importance of managing sheep health with the help of enhanced abattoir surveillance. To find out more or get support with your business, contact your local animal health advisor from the Department of Primary Industries and Regions or the South Australian Livestock Biosecurity Extension Team through the Livestock SA office. The Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of the Government of South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, the South Australian Sheep and Cattle Industry Funds and Sheep Connect SA.